The Onion tells how they were hacked, DMCA reform is coming, maybe, and how to stay anonymous like a Russian CIA informant. All that and more this time on ThreatWire. Hello and welcome to ThreatWire. I'm Shannon Morse and this is your summary of what's threatening security, privacy, and internet freedom. Now last week, The Onion's Twitter account was hacked by the Syrian Electronic Army. According to an article on BuzzFeed, the Syrian Electronic Army was inspired by an Occupy Wall Street activist article published by Workers Activation, which is a revolutionary socialist organization. The article, titled The Onion Website Joins the U.S. Anti-Syria Club, was written by Seamus Cook, who said, I will say that the Onion very much deserved to be hacked based on their terribly biased articles on Syria. The article they wrote about the Syrian Electronic Army post-hack was especially repulsive and only further proved the points made in my article. Now on May 8th, the tech team for The Onion posted a blog detailing how the SEA was able to obtain the social network password. The SEA sent phishing emails to a few employees on May 3rd, which looked like a Washington Post article, but redirected to our URL that asked for Google app credentials. One employee fell for this attack. So the SEA used their account to send more phishing emails. The new emails coming from the employee's email address contained another URL needing login credentials, which two more employees fell for. One of these accounts had access to social media. The Onion's team had everyone change their email passwords, but the SEA then sent out another duplicate email, looking just like that one, asking employees to change their email passwords. Another phishing attack. Go figure. Now, from from that access, the SEA was able to get access to the Twitter account and tweets ensued. Now eventually, The Onion made all of their employees change their Google app credentials after at least five accounts were compromised. Now I gotta say props to The Onion for sharing what happened. In most cases, companies are very hush-hush about the data that went on in the hack. Using their online reach, they can educate other companies on what many believe could never happen to them. So how do you protect yourself and your company? Educate your employees, isolate social network accounts, use Hootsuite or another app that is password protected for posts, and always have a way to contact employees outside of their company emails. Now, Darren, take it away. So how do you go about maintaining your online privacy when you're considering becoming a Russian CIA informant? Well, if the latest tale of an alleged CIA agent caught recruiting in Moscow is to be believed, use Gmail and lie. The story of Ryan Fogel, third secretary to the political department of the U.S. Embassy in Moscow, is developing into somewhat of a Cold War era spy scandal. The diplomat was declared persona non grata, which is fancy Latin for GTFO, political immunity notwithstanding. Now, the Russian FSB, or the security agency of the Russian Federation, it's actually the successor to the KGB, reported that Fogel was detained Monday night, quote, during an attempt to recruit a representative of one of the Russian security services. Fogel was handed over to the embassy following protocol. Now, the FSB is quoted by state-run news agency RIA as stating that Fogel had, quote, special technical devices, written instruction for the Russian citizen to be recruited, and a large sum of cash and means of changing his appearance. Of the arsenal, including wigs, dark glasses, and a fat stack of foreign cash, what's most intriguing to us is the letter to would-be Russian informant with instruction on further comment. Now, the letter, which the RT.com has translated, provides instructions for anonymously contacting the alleged recruiters. Quote, to get back with us, please go to an internet cafe or a coffee shop that has Wi-Fi and open a new Gmail account with which you will exclusively contact us. As you register, do not provide any personal information that can help identify you or your new account. Don't provide any real contacts, for example, your phone number or other email address. Now, the letter continues that if Gmail asks personal information, start the registration process again and avoid such contact. And once you register this new account, you can use it to message a redacted email address and in one week they'll get a reply. Now, Google requests a phone number and a secondary email address when signing up, but these fields are not required. The letter also contains sound advice on what device to use and how. If you use a netbook or any other device, for example a tablet, to open an account at the coffee shop, please don't use a personal device with personal data on it. If possible, buy a new device, paying in cash, which you will use to contact us. We'll reimburse you for the purchase. Now, I'd say all of this is actually pretty good advice, so if you're looking to maintain privacy while keeping that mainstream social profile, do what the CIA suggests.
lie. Now, a new bill is being proposed called the Unlocking Technology Act of 2013, which would give Americans freedom to unlock, repair, and modify devices that they own. Unlocking cell phones was deemed illegal earlier this year in January by the Librarian of Congress, with the White House attempting legalization efforts thereafter. Three bills have been introduced since then, none of which have really been a complete solution to the problem. The new bill will protect users as well as developers who create apps and software for unlocking. Currently developers face a huge fine and several years in jail for distributing such software. Now this bill will hopefully spur a much needed change in copyright with the reform of the broken Digital Millennium Copyright Act. Now you can read the bill and if you agree that this is a good solution, definitely let Congress hear your voice by using the link at fixthedmca.org. Last week we asked how you feel about companies gaining access to your social media accounts and our comment of the week comes from Pontus Wellen who wrote, if I went to a job interview and they asked for my Facebook login, I'd walk out immediately. I would never want to work for a company that thinks it's okay to force itself into my private life. Thank you, Darren. Now this week we'd like to know how you feel about the new Unlocking Technology Act of 2013. Give us your insight below. Now remember you can find all the ways to subscribe at threatwire.org and get involved with our Google Plus community. That's where the conversation continues all week. And with that, I'm Shannon Morse, and for Darren Kitchen, we'll see you next week. Bye.